This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohammed. Ukraine said Russia had launched a new round of missile attacks on Monday as the West tried to limit Moscow's ability to finance its invasion by imposing a price cap on Russian seaborne oil. Air alerts sounded across Ukraine and officials urged civilians to take shelter from what they said was the latest in waves of Russian missile strikes since its February 24 invasion. Missiles have already been launched, Air Force spokesperson Yuri Inat said. There was no immediate word of any damage or casualties. But officials were quoted by Ukrainian media as saying that explosions could be heard in some areas as air defense systems went into action. Russian forces have increasingly targeted Ukrainian energy facilities in recent weeks as they faced setbacks on the battlefield, causing more power outages as winter sets in. Ukraine had only just returned to scheduled power outages from Monday rather than the emergency blackout it has suffered since widespread Russian strikes on November 23rd, the worst of the attacks on energy infrastructure that began in early October. Russia has said the attacks are designed to degrade Ukraine's military. Ukraine says they are clearly aimed at civilians and thus constitute a war crime. A Palestinian man has been killed by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank, according to Palestinian health officials. The official Palestinian news agency Wafa said the victim is 22-year-old Omar Mana and that six other Palestinians were also wounded. The shooting which occurred near the city of Bethlehem on Monday comes amid a crackdown by Israeli forces in the territory with near-daily raids in the occupied West Bank, leading to killings and arrests. According to Wafa, Israeli soldiers entered the Daesh refugee camp on the outskirts of Bethlehem in the morning, sparking clashes with a group of local residents, then firing tear gas and opening fire at the crowd. The Israeli military said soldiers entered the camp to arrest what it described as three wanted militants. It said the soldiers opened fire after the crowd hurled rocks and firebombs at them. The latest killing comes amid sky-high tensions and bursts of violence as the most right-wing government in Israel's history is poised to be installed in the coming weeks. China is set to announce a further easing of some of the world's toughest COVID curves as early as Wednesday, sources said, as investors cheered the prospect of a policy shift that follows widespread protests and mounting economic damage. Three years into the pandemic, China's zero-tolerance measures from short borders to frequent lockdowns contrast sharply with the rest of the world, which has largely decided to live with the virus. The strict approach has battered the world's second-largest economy put mental strain on hundreds of millions and last month prompted the biggest show of public discontent in mainland China since President Xi Jinping took power in 2012. Although last month's protests largely subsided amid a heavy police presence across major cities, regional authorities have since cut back on lockdowns quarantine rules and testing requirements to varying degrees, top officials have also softened their tone on the dangers posed by the virus. The financial hub of Shanghai announced on Monday night that it would remove COVID testing requirements for people to enter most public places from Tuesday. Sudan's military and political parties have signed a framework deal that provides for a two-year civilian-led transition towards elections and would end a standoff triggered by a coup in October 2021. However, key dissenters, including anti-military protest groups and factions loyal to former leader Omar el-Bashir, who was overthrown in 2019, oppose hate. The initial agreement signed on Monday would limit the military's former role to a security and defense council headed by a prime minister but leaves sensitive issues, including transitional justice and security sector reform, for further talks. The deal also stipulates that the military will form part of a new security and defense council under the appointed prime minister. The agreement also vows to unify Sudan's armed forces and impose controls on military-owned companies. It is the first of at least two planned accords and was signed by Sudan's two ruling generals, Abdel Fattah Burhan and Mohamed Amdan Dagalu, and the leaders from the country's largest pro-democracy group, Forces of Freedom and Change, at the Republican Palace in Khartoum. In response to the signing, the pro-democracy resistance committee leaders called for demonstrations against the agreement. A court in charge has handed jail terms of up to three years to more than 260 people who were arrested after deadly protests in October. The mass trial took place in a high-security prison in the desert. 
Defense lawyers brought a court proceedings, arguing that the trial itself was not legal. More than 400 people faced charges, including taking part in an unauthorized gathering and disturbing public order. Officials said about 50 people died during October's nationwide pro-democracy protest, including 10 members of the security forces. Right groups said more than 100 people were killed by security forces. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Update. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy New Week!